celebrate and relive the highlights of some of the greatest coaches, players, and plays of one of college football's finest traditions. What, what has made the big game so special? Fantastic 46 of the 99 big games have been decided by seven points or less. Outstanding players, 55 All-Americans from Stanford and 55 All-Americans from Cal, many of whom became major stars in the NFL. Legendary coaches who brought two national championships to each school and one who, and one who revolutionized the game itself. The first big game was played in San Francisco in 1892. Future president Herbert Hoover, Stanford's team manager, only printed 5,000 tickets, but an overflow crowd of 15,000 showed up, forcing Hoover to collect coins and throw them in a wash tub. In all the excitement, no one remembered to bring a football. Frantically sent a man on horseback to a back to a store. Eventually, Stanford won the first big game, 14 to 10. Cal won its first big game in 1898. But from 1905 to 1919, when the presidents of both universities decided football was too violent, football was replaced by rugby. With the resumption of big game football in 1919, over the next 30 years, both Stanford and Cal were destined to have football dynasties with national impact. First came Cal's Wonder Team, team coached by Andy Smith, for four consecutive seasons, from 1920 through 1923. Cal, astounding 50, 50 games with a loss, including a Rose Bowl victory, a national championship, and four big, big wins in a row. During this time, with the big game now a major annual event in Northern California, Stanford Stadium opened in 1921 and Cal's Memorial Stadium opened in 1923. The 1924 big game is considered one of the greatest of all time. Legendary coach Pop Warner created a national, a national reputation for Stanford. His All-American star, Ernie Nevers, would eventually be picked by Sports Illustrated as the football back of the first half of this century. Cal had won the previous five big games and led Stanford 2013 with less than a minute remaining. Stanford needed to go to the Rose Bowl. A 34-yard touchdown pass saved the day for Stanford with a 2020 final score. Pop Warner's teams would win four of the next five big games participate in three of the next four Rose Bowls and win a national champion championship in 1926. Starting in 1933, when the Axe became the official trophy of the big game, future All-American Bobby Green and his Stanford teammates vowed, vowed never lose to USC or Cal. In their first game, this 52-yard touchdown pass from Frank Alastasia to Al Norgard put Stanford's Val Boys in the 1930 Bowl. But only after Stanford's Bones Hamilton intercepted this last-second Cal touchdown attempt. The Val Boys went to the Rose Bowl the following two years and, as promised, never lost to USC or Cal. But starting in 1936, now it was Cal's turn to win four straight big games. Cal's Thunder Team was led by All-Americans Bob Herwig, Sam Chapman, and Vic Batari, with, with Batari seen here throwing one of his patented great passes to Angelo Reganato in the 1938 big game. The Thunder Team brought Cal its second national championship and a win over Alabama in the Rose Bowl. The all-time winningest coach for the game would be Cal's Pappy Waldorf. Start, starting in 1940, Pappy's Bears would win seven big games with only one, with only one loss. And Pappy's first big game in 1947, the 50th big game, would eventually be considered the best of those first 50. Cal was ranked number three in the nation and favored by 28 points over Stanford, which hadn't won a game all season. But, 
But with less than three minutes remaining, a stunned crowd found Stanford ahead 18 to... But with second down, but with second down, the ball was pitched to Cal's All-American runner, Jackie Jensen. Jensen threw a wobbly jump pass to Paul Keckley, who had been injured all year and had begged Pappy to put him in the last seconds of the game. Keckley raced for 65 yards and a stunning Cal victory as the Cal fans, who moments before had given up all hope, went for the goalposts. Seven years earlier, Coach Clark Shaughnessy Hennessy had literally revolutionized college football by bringing the T formation to and for the next half century, the big game would star the greatest quarterbacks in college history, starting with Stanford's incomparable All-American, Frankie Albert. We had been a, a single-wing team the, the year previous when we didn't win a game. We turned around with a T formation and a new coach and a new attitude, and we didn't lose a game. And the opposition, our opponents, had never seen uh, uh, the T formation before, and uh, uh, it was so much fun to get the ball from center and, and make a couple fakes to the back, uh, uh, going into the line and then drop back to pass, and nobody could find the ball. And uh, it was really uh, uh, a fun formation for us because we were so successful. Stanford won nine straight in 1940 and was undefeated going into the big game. But Cal almost pulled the upset of the year, losing barely 13 to 7. Stanford went on to beat Nebraska in the 1941 Rose Bowl. After World War II, T formation quarterbacks were changing college football forever. In 1953, two All American quarterbacks, Stanford's Bobby Garrett and Cal's Paul Larson, would lead their teams in one of the greatest big games of all time. The game would have four lead changes. Larson fakes a jump pass, rolls out to his right a little further as he scans the field. Then he gets the pass away, and it's complete. The weight and weight is out of bounds after picking up 15 yards and a foul. Garrett again drops back. He looks for his receiver, and this time it's Sam Morley. And Morley makes a great catch, and it's good for 14 yards and a first down. Larson takes the ball from center. He drops back, looks down the field for a receiver. He gets the pass away, but it's intercepted by Bobby Garrett of Stanford. Garrett is across the midfield strike, the California 40, gets good blocking, goes to the sidelines, across the Cal 20, the 15, the 10, into the corner and into the end zone for a Stanford touchdown. But Larson engineered two more Cal touchdowns to make it a 21-21 tie. With just a few seconds left, Larson needed a 16-yard field goal to win the game. But his toe caught the turf, and one of the most exciting of 11 big game times was history. By 1955, Cal hadn't lost a big game in nine years. But Stanford's All-American, John Brody, finally ended Stanford's misery, passing for 250 yards and a touchdown in leading Stanford to a 19 to nothing victory. In 1956, with a last-minute dramatic announcement by Pappy Wall that he was retiring, sophomore quarterback and future All-American Joe Cap rushed for 106 yards that gave Cal a huge, Cal a huge upset victory, 20 to 8. In 1958, Cap quarterbacked a 16 to 15 upset of Stanford to put the Bears in the Rose Bowl. Later, Cap led the Minnesota Vikings to the Super and eventually became Cal's head coach. From 1962 to 1964, Cal's All-American Craig Morton became the Bears' most prolific passer of all time. Seen here, throwing a 62-yard beauty to Tom Blanchfield in the 1964 big game. From 1968 to 1970, Stanford's Jim Plunkett did it all. In Stanford's 29-28 victory in the 1969 big game, he completed 22 of 41 passes, including two touchdown passes. First to Howie Wood, and then to Jack Lassiter. Plunkett's 409 yards for total offense still stands as the big game record. Plunkett was the only big game participant ever to win the Heisman Trophy, and he went on to win two Super Bowls with the Oakland Raiders. Stanford coach John Ralston, who won seven out of the nine big games he coached, 
followed the Plunkett Rose Bowl win with a second consecutive Rose Bowl victory as Don Bunce completed 34 out of 44 passes. In 1972, in a sea of mud, Stanford led Cal 21 to 18 after seven lead changes with three, with three seconds left on the clock. Former Cal star and now Cal's coach, Mike, could have gone for an easy field goal and a tie. He chose to go for the win. Cal's freshman quarterback, Vince Ferragamo, lofted a pass toward the end zone. Cal's Cal Steve Sweeney caught the winning touchdown face down in the mud in one of the most dramatic finishes in big game history. Once again, it was Cal's turn to celebrate a remarkable comeback. In, in 1974, another impossible finish featuring two future quarterbacks, Cal's Steve Bartkowski and Stanford's Guy Benjamin. Bartkowski, a future number one NFL draft choice put on a tremendous aerial display. But replacement quarterback Guy Benjamin hit Stanford's Tony Hill for a 62-yard touchdown and a 19-10 Stanford lead. But with only 33 seconds remaining on 4th and 10, a do-or-die Bartkowski pass to All-American Steve Rivera pulled to a 19-19 to tie. Cal's Jim made the all-important extra point, and Cal fans started to celebrate the impossible comeback. But with, with two seconds left, while Cal fans watched in disbelief, Stanford's Michael Langford hit an impossible 50-yard field goal, giving Stanford a 22-20 victory with no time left on the clock. And it was time for Stanford fans to celebrate one of the greatest of all game, com game comebacks. A century of big games has had hundreds of miles. The, the longest pass completion came in the 1987 big game. Stanford's Brian Johnson and Walter Batson teamed up for an 82-yarder as part of a 31-7 stand. Future All-American John Elway would complete 18 of 27 passes for 245 yards and no interceptions to lead Stanford to a 42-21 to 1981 Big Game victory. Elway would become the, become the third Big Game Stanford quarterback to be drafted number, number one in the NFL and would de Denver into three Super Bowls. The 1988 Big Game exploded with records. And in the second quarter, Stanford's Kevin Scott took the kickoff on his own five and raced for a 95-yard touchdown. Another big game record. The longest run was way back in 1902, when the field was 110 yards, when Cal's Bobby Sherman ran back a punt for 105 yards. In 1941, Cal's All-American tackle Bob Reinhardt almost single-handedly stopped Stanford's All-American backfield, the previous Rose Bowl winners, to lead the Bears to a huge 16-0 upset. Unsung heroes, there were dozens, including Cal's Dave Penhall, who completed 18 of 26 for 231 yards in Cal's 1970 upset over Rose Bowl-bound Stanford. In 1995, Cal's Pat Barnes threw for 334 yards, but Stanford won 29 to 24. In 1959, in the most spectacular passing performance of any big game, Stanford's Dick Norman set an NCAA record. Norman completed 34 of 39 passes for 401 yards, with All-American Chris Burford catching 12 to tie a big, tie a big game record. Only to help, led by quarterback Wayne Crow, win, win the 20 to 17. The big game has been blessed with some of the greatest running backs in college history. Cal's Al Darien seen here running, running an electrifying 46-yard touchdown on Cal's first A in the 1941 upset over Stanford. Cal's great, Cal's great Jackie Jensen carries 19 times for 170 yards in 1948 for a... Cal's All-American Jim Monachino's 84-yard run in the 1949 Big Game was the big game record for the longest run from scrimmage. 
Cal's All-American Chuck Muncie completely dominated the 1975 big game, running for three touchdowns and passing for a fourth fourth touchdown, leading the Bears to a huge 40-15 victory as he tied the big game record for most points in a game. Cal's All-American Russell White ran for a total of 361 yards in three big games, including an average of nearly 10 yards a carry in 18 attempts in his 1990 sophomore year. Stanford's all-everything backfield in 1940 of, of Pete Kamek, Hugh Gallerno, and Norm Stanley. Stanford's all-American Darren Nelson's 46-yard run in 1978 as Nelson leads Stanford to a big 30-10 victory. Stanford's Vincent White, between 1979 and 1982, scored eight touchdowns in four big games, the all-time scoring leader for the big game. Stanford's All-American Brad Muster in the 1984 big game ran for 204 yards. His 34 carries tied the Stanford record that had been set 60 years earlier by Ernie Nevers. Stanford's All-American Glenn Milburn makes the longest punt return in big game history as he runs for 76 yards in the 1992 big game. Of course, great quarterbacks need great receivers, and the big game had dozens of those, including Stanford All-Americans Jim Lawson, Monk Musgrave, Bill McCall, Sam Morley, Chris Burford, and Ken Martin, and future pro greats Gene Washington, James Lopp, and Tony Hill. Of, of Stanford's 55 All-Americans, the big game standouts in the line, two future Stanford coaches. Chuck Taylor and Paul Wigan, Jeff C., Pat Donovan, Duncan McCall, Gordon King, Bob Reynolds, and Bob Whitfield. Cal's outstanding receivers included All-Americans Brick Muller, Harry Schwartz, Steve Rivera, Sean Dawkins, Tony Gonzalez, and David Lewis, as well as future pro standouts Wesley Walker, Matt Booza, and Joe Rose. Of Cal's 55 All-Americans, the big game standouts in the line included Rob France, Les Richter, Matt Hazelton, Matt, Jim Turner, Todd, Stu Todd Stuzzi, and Troy Azeen. But of all the 99 big games, two stand out as the most ele electrifying. 1982 and 1990. In the 1982 big game, Cal's Gail Gilbert would throw for 289 yards and, and Stanford's John Elway for 330 yards. Cal's John Tuggle and Ron Story would run for 180 yards and Stanford's Vincent White for 152 yards. After, after four lead changes, Cal's Gail Gilbert threw this pass to Wes Howell, who made a tremendous catch and Cal went ahead to 17. With less than a minute remaining, Elway faced, faced a fourth and 17 on his own 13-yard line. But Elway found Emil Harry for 29 yards and a first. Elway then brought Stanford to, to Cal's 18-yard line in one of the greatest comeback drives in big game history. Stay, stay the clock to eight seconds, and then brought in Mark Harmon, who calmly kicked a 35-yard field goal to give Stanford an apparent 20-19 come-from-behind victory. But Stanford was penalized 15 yards for their celebration. So Stanford was forced to kick from their own 25. There were four seconds remaining. For Stanford, it would be an eternity. Stanford, I think, was a little bit lackadaisical in that they felt the game was over. It was just a matter of kicking off, and that was it. Although you look up at the clock and you only see four seconds, it's kind of hard to, to think that it's not over. Well, the way we felt at that moment, and we looked at each other and we both said, it's, it's not over. It was a case where our players on the sideline were telling our players on the field, the ball will not fall. Uh, our captain, Richard Rogers, had, uh, had missed an interception on the drive earlier, uh, so he was playing with total guilt and, uh, and showing great leadership by telling his players, uh, the ball will not fall. Harmon will probably try to squib it, and he does. Ball comes loose, and the Bears have to get out of bounds. Rodgers along the sideline, another one. They're still in deep trouble at midfield. They tried to do a couple of... The ball is still loose!
as they get it to Rogers. They give it back now to the 30. They're down to the 20. Oh, the band is out on the field. He's going to go into the end zone. He's going to go into the Bears. The Bears have won. The Bears have won. Oh, my God. The most amazing, sensational, dramatic, heart-rending, exciting, thrilling finish in the history of college. California has won. <laughs> It's a big game over Stanford. Over. I think it uh, just shows the tremendous rivalry of two great universities, two great educational institutions that can go on the field of battle and compete and uh, know that uh, uh, you better play it right down to the end because if you don't, the other team will. And Stanford dreams someday of a fitting revenge. It finally came eight years later in the big game of 1990. In a game where the lead would change six times, Cal led 17 to six at halftime. But Stanford's Glenn Milburn opened the second half by bringing the kickoff back 55 yards, leading to John Hopkins' third field goal of the game. Cal now led 17 to nine. On Stanford's next possession, Milburn raced 53 yards into the end zone, the longest touchdown run from scrimmage in big game history. And Cal's lead was down to 17 to 15. A few minutes later, Stanford's Hopkins kicked his fourth field goal of the day, and Stanford led 18 to 17. Cal marched back, and Russell White scored on an eight yard run, putting Cal back in the lead 25 to 18. But Stanford's quarterback, Jason Columbus, mounted a sustained drive and finally hit Ed McCaffrey for a touchdown. The Cal lead was now 25 to 20 to 24. Stanford had an interest in a tie and went for a two-point conversion. Make the in motion to the left side, reverses it right. Here it is, Columbus rolling out to his right. Looks into the end zone, throws for McCaffrey, intercepted. It's broken up by Hardy, and the Bears stay in front. And the fans come out on the field, and he's still got a kickoff. <laughs> the field is engulfed with fans wearing the blue and gold. They will have to clear the field here. And in a remarkable reversal of the 1982 game, this time Cal was penalized 15 yards for celebrating, meaning Stanford could try an onside kick from the 50-yard line. 59 minutes and 48 seconds. It's come to this. Here's the onside kick by Hopkins. Going across the board. Touched by one of the Bears. Let's see who gets it. And it's still up for grabs. Stanford has it with 10 seconds left at the 37-yard line. I almost can't believe that. No timeout submitting. They have to go out of bounds or get an incompletion. Columbus to pass. Throws up field. It is out of bounds. Incomplete with five seconds. There's a penalty marker on the play. Roughing the passer on the defense. First down. What an... I mean, after 1982, do you say incredible finish? Because it couldn't top that, could it? Here's the pedal stepped off. Down to the 22-yard line. So it will be about a 39-yard field goal attempt for John Hopkins. Well, my thoughts were just stay calm and relax and, and uh, take the ball and don't, don't get caught up in all the distractions. There were a lot of things going on at the time, and there have been a lot of things leading up to that point. So the main thing was go out and do your job, focus, and kick the ball and, and get it over with and, and go on. Has a chance to win it. Here we go. Five seconds left. Gillingham snap. Placed down by Smith. The kick is up. It's on its way. It's long enough. It's good. It is good. And Stanford has won it as Tom Run runs out. Stanford has won it on John Hopkins' 39-yard field goal as time expires. And there's a wild sea of red and white down on the field where maybe three or four minutes ago, oh, it was the blue in California celebrating after Hardy's intercepted. This one may have outdone them all, at least for Stanford fans. The Cal fans will choose 1982. On the eve of the 100th big game, Stanford has won 49. Cal has won 39. And there have been 11 ties.
But if you're into numerology, Cal has won the 25th, 50th, and 75th big games. It's a kind of an, it's a kind of an awesome and humbling experience to be able to lead this Cal Golden Bear football team into the big game because it is the centennial game, the 100th big game between Stanford and Cal. And I know uh, when I take that field in November for the Stanford game, that the ghosts, so to speak, of Andy Smith and Pappy Waldorf and Pop Warner and all the great coaches at the two schools through the years will be watching and they'll be expecting a great game. It's a real blessing uh, that at this point in time, uh, I'm the coach that will lead Stanford to the 100th big game. And it is the same um, uh, feelings that I give you today that I also take to our football team. That of all the players that have played at Stanford, these young men will have the opportunity to participate in the 100th game. I will be reminding them, first of all, of who they are. And that they're Stanford. And that there's a way we do this thing there's a way we prepare, and there's a way we play. And that uh, preparation, that manner that we play is based on all the years, based on, in fact, those hundred years of great players and great coaches that have gone on before them. And that we have a responsibility to those players and those coaches to live up to the standard and the style of football that they've played at Stanford. The California Stanford Big Game, a tradition of excellence shared by four generations for over a hundred years. The California Stanford Big Game, with game number 100 coming up to honor all those who have come for, all those who wore the red and white, and all those who wore the blue and gold, in one of the greatest traditions in all of sport. Tummy of the golden bear. Sounds of the sand for red. 